What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Courting. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Wonderful, wonderful day, that is. And uh, it's time we take a little trip down Taylor Lorenz, popular internet hall monitors, Taylor Lorenz and like Carlos Maza and, and others. You know, they're out there telling everyone how to uh, be a better person. And they're just, you know, raise themselves up from their bootstraps kind of people. And they're just like you and me. Oh, wait, actually, a new tweet thread completely exposed them all as literal multimillionaires who never worked a day in their life. Shocking. By the way, also Taylor Lorenz having a complete meltdown at one of her coworkers. These are the people, by the way, who they're the better. They think they're better than you, right? Let's, 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 let's get into this amazing thread that basically puts everything out on the table about Taylor and Carlos Maza and much more after a super quick word from this video sponsor. Huge shout out to this video sponsor, Established Titles. Established Titles is a project based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds or lords and ladies in English. They allow people to buy as little as one square foot of dedicated land so they can call themselves a lord or a lady officially. In return, they commit to plant a tree with every order and protect the beautiful, pristine woodlands of Scotland. Established Titles makes an absolutely amazing gift, and a person could officially get their name changed on documents. Their title pack gives you at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate and an official certificate with a crest. Established Titles is currently having a really big sale just for you, my subscribers. You can get an additional 10% off any purchase you make with the discount code the quartering so click the link below go to establishedtitles.com slash the quartering and use promo code the quartering to save an extra 10 percent today now all credit to fear the floof uh, i just came across this thread today and uh i followed them myself and you should probably consider following them too it looks like they do some excellent work quote one of the most fascinating things about the modern age we live in is the population of journalists almost exclusive being from mega rich families and the fact that they've done such a good job of hiding it from the internet. The most extreme case was, of course, Carlos Maza. Remember him? He basically got uh, Crowder deplatformed de or de demonetized. Um, he tried to bring upon or was successful in yet another adpocalypse. The most extreme case was Carlos Maza. Right out of Wake. He worked for Vox, publishing extreme left-wing views and targeting anyone on the right, no matter how poor or middle class. What almost no one knew was he was a billionaire. What's amazing about this is almost no one knew his mother and stepfather were tech billionaires with multiple mansions, yachts, and private planes. Maza was raised in a $10.8 million mansion in Boca Raton. Until his termination at Vox, there was no Google result you could even get that would tell you anything about his background. Nothing. A complete memory hole. For almost 10 years, he was able to use his massive platform to cancel anyone he saw fit and abuse his power unchecked. It wasn't until he was fired from Vox for being too much of a left-wing extremist, just let that sink in, he began his failed YouTube career, and he began his failed YouTube career. Did anyone do any digging into the, how the guy afforded some of the most expensive real estate in New York with zero income. A billionaire journalist who went to Christopher Columbus High School, a Wake Forest University, was able to cosplay a working class socialist attacking poor and working class couples, people for years, without knowing his real background. Taylor Lorenz actually might be worse, a worse offender of that hypocrisy. While born to fabulous wealth, I don't know if Carlos Maza was a billionaire. I know his he came from multi-millions, but, he didn't really back up the billionaire, but he's super rich. His parents were super rich. He's super rich. Anyway, Taylor Lorenz might actually be an even worse offender of this hypocrisy. While born into fabulous wealth and privilege, she has the family power to keep her past off the internet. Even after it became known, she can actually get it removed forever from the internet. What's amazing about Taylor Lorenz is that we know she was born in NYC, raised in the richest zip code of Connecticut, we know she attended a Swiss private boarding school and graduated from Hobart and William Smith College, but that's about it. While the women of wealth and privilege can dox even the poorest, weakest, least powerful people on the internet, publishing all their private information, addresses, workplaces, and phone numbers, 
she can apparently get anything about herself wiped off the internet forever. I mean, it's true. We know this. Um, she had like some family member that was, you know, high up on the board of the internet archive. There are services. Uh, there are services that exist to scrub things, but it's extremely difficult to do. Um, how would a TikTok journalist be able to get her history wiped off the internet forever? Well, hold on to your butts while we go balls deep into the family of Miss Lorenz that you can't find on the internet without much effort. For the record, by the way, again, double shout out to Fear the, at Fear the Floof on Twitter. You should definitely follow them. Looks like some good work here. For the record, this is all publicly available information. It's just hard to find without looking. Taylor Lorenz was born to a mega rich developer, Walter R. Lorenz and Anna Lorenz and raised in a $5.7 million mansion. Her sister is Brooke Lorenz and works at CNN. But it's her uncle who's the big story here. You see, Taylor Lorenz's mom and uncle were mega rich children of a very powerful politician. And R. McDonald, her uncle, is the owner slash founder of the Wayback Machine Internet Archive. Trying to find any information about these people on the internet is nearly impossible. Taylor Lorenz even had her uncle exempt her Twitter account from the Wayback Machine. Once she deletes her tweets, they are literally wiped from the internet forever. Now that's power you can't buy. I should say, I've archived her tweets before. I don't know if those archives disappear. I guess I've never gone back to look, but that's a claim that I can't verify for sure. I do know that her history is exempt from the Wayback Machine. Go ahead, Google her. Look at her wiki page. You see, you see anything there like you do with literally any other public figure? No, nothing. She's even managed to have public record of her date of birth wiped, pics from her high school or college that could age her gone. For the record, Taylor Lorenz was born October 21st, 1984 in New York, making her 37. She will be 38 in 16 days. Wish her happy birthday. I think maybe he, that's a typo. I think it's 1884. That, that's what I heard. Taylor Lorenz is a mega rich child of wealth and privilege from a powerful political family whose uncle can wipe any of her history off the internet forever and has been given a massive platform with the New York Times and the Washington Post to attack, smear, dox, harass, and terrorize anyone she wants. Here's a perfect example of just yesterday having a melty. Taylor Lorenz blasts the Washington Post colleague over, quote, absurd, insensitive coof tweet. Taylor Lorenz, the Washington Post's most controversial technology and online culture columnist, slammed one of her colleagues at the newspaper for an absurd, insensitive tweet about the coof just months after the Post reporter was fired for tweeting criticism of coworkers. Of course, she won't be fired. Lorenz responded to a tweet by Helene Olin, a columnist and contributor to the Washington Post opinion page, who opined on a page six story detailing how, her infamous, how infamous germaphobe Howard Stern left his bunker to dine with friends for the time since the onsite for the first time since the coup at some point we're going to need to begin a conversation about the people who are still too afraid to leave their homes because of the coup olin tweeted i personally know two such cases this is not a healthy way to live 100 percent agree there are people not in my family but th there are people in um i shouldn't say that there are people in my family who have been ruined by it who still live in fear, who still have not gone back to the movies, who still have not gone to like any shows or any concerts or public events. Uh, and I think they're going to be damaged like that for life. Um, there are kids that I see, perfectly healthy kids walking around and playing outside, wearing masks. I mean, why? Um, and you see Lorenz, who has been vocal on Twitter about what she believes in, that we need, <coughs> excuse me, stricter, Mitigation measures to protect those with comorbidities responded, what an absurd, insensitive thing to post. Thousands are dying a week. Millions are disabled. And we have zero effective drugs that prevent infection, Lorenz tweeted to, in response. Um, what? Like, give me no compromise. Don't deserve condescending comments about being too afraid of a virus that can kill or severely disable us. I mean, she's a perfect example of somebody who lives in fear, right? She is 
this is her opinion and this is what she's put out into the world too right this is somebody who believes that the world should still be stuck at home years later that that we made no mistakes in destroying small business and main streets look around your small towns how many little businesses are no longer open anymore the place where i bought my snowblower the place that was like rock solid for service for years and years just went out of business because of it you know the, the, there's I mean, they went out of business because of it, but they went out of business like six or eight months ago. They were a staple in my small town for 30 years. You know, there's all sorts of you know restaurants and things like that that never survived it. At, at some point, as cruel as it may sound, your health situations is not everyone else's problem to deal with. It sucks. I sympathize, but I'm not going to walk around triple masks because Taylor Lorenz is afraid. I digress. The threat continues. Ben Collins of NBC has leveraged his power and family wealth to become one of the most powerful internet hall monitors of our age. While Taylor Lorenz can get her wiki page wiped, Ben doesn't even have one. Like, really? The lead disinformation journalist at the biggest network news platform in the United States has not even a blurb that pots up in the first 100 pages of results. Like, there are obscure poets from hundreds of years ago with countries that don't in countries that don't even exist anymore that have at least one blurb on wiki how is information on one of the most powerful journalists with a massive platform so hard to find literally everywhere you go this is what you'll find like a pre you know edited blurb about him what do we know he's 47 years old man who went to emerson college which costs wait for it seventy-five thousand dollars a year to attend in today's dollars a very private, very exclusive, buy your way in college founded in 1880 for rich white people to buy an exclusive education. Ben Collins has built a brand around targeting citizens who work against Democrats and labeling them uh, domestic terries for the most part. He targets the poor and middle class, the weak, the people with no resources and no way to fight back and clear their name once smeared. And again, Ben Collins gets to be a private citizen. His parents, his address, his personal private life are protected from public view. You don't get to know about wealth and privilege he grew up in. But if he targets you, everyone will know what you had for dinner. And I can do and I can do it in just one tweet. He's a Vanderbilt. He's a Vanderbilt for F's sake. That's uh, Anderson Cooper. Chris Cuomo. Do we even need to address how rich and connected uh, Cuomo is? All these people, rich, powerful, multimillionaires, they're the ones they're the ones who come from privilege and this is who is telling you what you should and shouldn't do online and that's why all of these lunatics should be mocked ignored and exposed i hope you enjoyed this video if you did make sure you leave a like on it we'll talk to you again real soon